Hi everyone and welcome back to the Southerners Northern Garden. So today we're going to be discussing uh, lawn reseeding and lawn care. So my lawn primarily, now that it's a few years old, it has some weed uh, seed, grass seed in there, but primarily my grass is all blue grass. I did a complete lawn renovation about four years ago now in the fall. So typically you want to do your overseeding and lawn seeding in the fall around September, uh, depending on which area of the United States you live in and whether it's cooled off enough. Uh, you want sufficient ground temperatures of 50 to 60 degrees. That's ground, not air temperatures. And then you want uh, the cooler weather so it can retain enough moisture to germinate because seeds like both heat and wetness as we know from growing in our garden. And so I'm choosing today to do it because we're getting rain tomorrow and two other days this week. I am planting turf type tall fescue. I'll show you a picture of the varieties right quick, but I'm overseeding my lawn with fescue because my bluegrass is a bit temperamental in winter. I've mentioned that it thins out really bad. I really love it as far as like a repair standpoint. Uh, it kind of spreads and does its own thing, but there's also some great turf type tall fescues that have been bred recently that spread similar to bluegrass does. Maybe not as vigorously, but there is that spreading capabilities. Most of my neighbors have a turf type tall fescue. It just is really good in our zone. And I tried out bluegrass and like I said, I still really like it, but I need something that's a little more dependable, particularly in winter uh, in the backyard with the pets. And so I'm going with these varieties of turf type tall fescue, which I ordered from United Seed in January, you know, I got sent the wrong seed when I opened the bag last week. They immediately next day shipped me new seed. And I actually got it on Saturday, so it only took two days to get to me. Uh, but this is it right here. It's Super Turf 1. So the germination rate is between 90 and 94% on the four different variety types we have in here. Uh, there's what it looks like. Can screenshot or take a picture of that if you're interested. All grass seeds are not created equal. So if you go to your big box store, Lowe's, Home Depot, um, you'll probably see seed there, but it's not necessarily weed free. So what you're looking for in a seed is a sod quality seed or a seed that is certified 0% weeds. And so that's really important um, if you don't want to be introducing weeds immediately into your garden. And so always pick out a certified weed free seed. And then before you pick out a blend, or if you want to go to a blend, um, I don't necessarily recommend a monoculture grass, which means one specific variety of grass throughout your entire lawn. They're really beautiful, really lush, really perfect. But um, if you get disease with one variety type, it spreads among the entire grass and it can be really detrimental to your turf. So, Preferably you want to go with a blend or several different variety types. And these, I would recommend you just go to the NTEP trials, NTEP, um, search your region. So I think my lo closest one is like Indiana maybe. Uh, and then you can actually find all the grass seeds by variety type ranked on a scale of one to 10 based on their like vigor, uh, how quickly they green up in spring. Uh, all sorts of different classifications, and you obviously want to pick those grass seeds that rank the highest in every category. So this blend I have selected has uh, varieties that have been bred by Mountain View Seeds, I think is the company. Uh, some of those include Fourth Millennium and Titanium, I think Valkyrie as well. And so they have done a really good job breeding turf type tall fescue uh, with that lateral spreading um, technology is what they're calling it. So it spreads similar to bluegrass. And so that means one, it's self-repairing. If you have a dog urine spot over winter or you dump too much fertilizer out that's not organic and even organic and it damages the lawn, it'll fill back in over time and you don't necessarily have to reseed every year. If your lawn is just turf type tall fescued or a non-spreading grass, typically you should be reseeding it probably every year, just a light overseeding. And so read the bag instructions, whatever you need to do to figure out how much reseeding is or overseeding versus a fresh lawn because the calculations or the pounds you're gonna put down per square foot are significantly different. And why you don't wanna put more than the bag recommends is because of overcrowding issues. Just like you don't wanna overcrowd plants in your garden, you don't wanna overcrowd grass because it can create fungus issues and die off as a result of that. 
So do not go over the recommended amount. Going under is perfectly fine. Uh, and so follow that recommended dosage on the bag. So the few things you'll need are obviously a spreader. And so I am today going to be using just these handheld spreaders. Preferably because I have so many flower beds, I would have a drop spreader that just drops the seed directly on the ground around the bed lines. My big spreader, which I have out here that I'll show you that has my fertilizer in it, does not have a side guard. And so it spreads 180 degrees both ways. And I obviously don't want to be throwing that seed into my garden beds. And so I have two here. This one's called the Wiz. I picked up a couple years ago. It's battery operated. Uh, it's by Scott's. And then I have another one, I think by Scott's, that's just a handheld one. The Wiz is kind of nice that just if you have hand issues, you can just squeeze it and you can actually lock it and just walk around. It'll be easier for me to manually. It slings seed in. Um, Actually, the Wiz has a little guard here, so it won't sling, but like 90 degrees. So that'll be nice going around the bed edges. Uh, and also, since I'm overseeding, I don't need to put down that much seed. So just follow your recommended bag amount, as I mentioned. I also have a scale. So typically, um, you're putting down grass seed in pounds per 1,000 square feet, or whatever the bag recommends. Typically, it's pounds per 1,000 square feet. And so I'm just gonna set the spreader on it uh, tear my scale and fill it up to however many pounds this bag recommends to spread per thousand square feet. And then when you're all done with that, you will apply a fertilizer. Uh, fertilizer of your choice, organic or inorganic, we're not here to judge you on your fertilizer um, selections. I am using Melorganite. Um, Melorganite is great stuff. Um, it is really expensive. Recently I started Melorganite or using Melorganite. Uh, when I really got into lawn care and then the prices went up to uh, almost $20 a bag and I needed four bags basically to do my lawn at that time. Of course, it shrunk because I have all these flower beds. But at the time I needed four bags and I just wasn't going to pay $80 um, four to five times a year to fertilize my lawn. And so I happened to catch this on sale at a uh, Rural King back in March and it was only $12 a bag, so I got three bags of it. So that should be all I need to cover my whole lawn. Uh, if you're starting fresh with grass seed, Melorganite is an organic, so it breaks down over time. If you're starting fresh with grass seed, you can also buy something called a starter fertilizer. Typically those are inorganic, um, but they provide lots of uh, phosphorus um, for root growth and root de development on those young grass seedlings, which is really important in spring. And it might be something I recommend um, if you are okay with using a non-organic fertilizer in your lawn. So we've talked a lot about grass seed and things you need to do overseeding. Let's just get to moving on. So the first thing I'm going to do is look up how much pounds of seed I need to put down per thousand square feet. Um, you should be sectioning off, kind of know generally how big your lawn is. Take There's tools online to do it through Google Maps and such. Uh, and just know, you know, it's a roughly... 10 by 100 foot area. So just figure out those calculations and then get the seed down. So we're gonna get that started right now. So one thing I do wanna mention is tall fescue is obviously a northern type grass, a transition type grass or the transition zone, which is kind of the area I live in. Um, for overseeding, it's just recommended generally three to four pounds per square feet, per 1,000 square feet. So I'm just gonna fill this up and see how many pounds we get here. Um, and then I'm going to walk off my yard. Uh, I teared the scale. It's completely full or slap full as we'd call it where I'm from. Uh, and it's roughly two, uh, almost two and a half pounds. And so I know I need basically one and a half of these uh, for every thousand square feet or one-ish for every uh, 500 or so square feet. Doesn't have to be perfect. Don't get super concerned. Uh, but err on the side of less seed maybe than more seed, depending on if you're overseeding or freshly seeding new lawn. You just don't want to end up with overcrowding and fungus issues. So we're going to get this spread and I'm going to try and go around the edges of the property first uh, and then we'll come back and go through the center. I'm going to put on my edge guard right here right quick so it's not spraying uh, all in my flower bed and then we're just going to get started. One thing I want to mention is that fescue is obviously a northern type grass. Um, you don't want to be using it in Alabama 
or the south because it will turn brown in summer. So that's a lot of the difference between northern type grasses uh, and southern type grasses are northern grasses do not like the heat. They like the winter and the cold uh, and they will brown out if not given sufficient water uh, during the summer, uh, much like northern or southern grasses brown out in winter. All right, a couple things. Uh, some people roll their grass seed afterwards, so they take a big barrel that's filled with water uh, and roll over the seed so that there's sufficient soil contact, because as you know from gardening, that's also a requirement for grass seed to germinate. Uh, I'm not doing that. I'm going to water it in briefly uh, with my sprinkler system uh, after I get the fertilizing done, and then the rain tomorrow will wash that into the grass a little better. You just also want to cut your grass kind of low uh, because you don't want to be trafficking on this area or cutting this grass for a couple weeks, because if you do, uh, you could potentially damage those little seedlings. And so you want to make sure they're sufficiently up. Turf type tall fescue germinates rather quickly, so by the end of the week, I expect to have germination. Bluegrass, if you're growing bluegrass, is a very painful, very painful um, watch and wait. So it can take three to four weeks to germinate, and after that time, it just sits there uh, for several more weeks before it even starts growing. Turf type tall fescues don't necessarily like that. So it's another benefit of using fescue and getting it done in the spring. You don't have to wait that long period like you do bluegrass. And so I'm gonna be watering mine in. Uh, you could also top dress uh, with a compost. Peat moss is what I used when I redid my lawn. Um, uh, straw, some people use that. I don't necessarily recommend it. Peat moss is really nice. You could also do cocoa core to the extent it's not cost prohibitive, but you can actually see based on the color of those materials, peat moss or cocoa core, whether they're damp or not, which is a good indicator of whether you need to add more water. Um, but those are the primarily two requirements. There's also this paper material called seed grass seed accelerator, I think, which I've used. And if I have a bag of it in the garage, I may throw it down on my bare spots because it helps uh, seal in that moisture for the seed to germinate and also contains a little bit of fertilizer. But I'm going to jump on the fertilizer bandwagon right now. Uh, this fertilizer or this uh, spreader that I have does not have a guard on it. And so I will be running right up against the edge and it will in turn be fertilizing some of my flower beds as I go around them and that's perfectly fine to me. Now if you choose Melorganite, it is a bio sol solid. Your dogs may be really interested in everywhere that it was sprayed over the past, um, over the next couple weeks or so until it gets watered in. Uh, and it does have a smell. Some say it smells like success. Others disagree, but let's get started. Also, just in general, follow the bag recommendations for your spreader settings for your fertilizer, just like you would for your seed. Uh, with an inorganic fertilizer, it's even more important because you don't want to burn the delicate seedlings or your existing lawn for that matter. Uh, with organic, there's more room to fudge because it breaks down over time, but just be cognizant of what you're doing there. So that is it. I'm at the point where I would just water in the seed. Uh, I'm going to go finish the rest of the front lawn and I will catch you in the next video because I can't wait to show you the progress I made on the south side over here next to the fence. Here's a little sneak peek. Let's just walk over there right quick. If you made it this far, thank you. So that means you're just really interested in grass and gardens. So we got a little bit planted uh, this weekend. Uh, there's a lot beneath the surface here. It's not completely full because uh, I have more plants coming this week uh, that are going to go in these spaces. And I'm very much a uh, out of sight, out of mind person. So I definitely could have filled up this entire space with the plants that I had and then not had anywhere to put the plants that are coming this week. And so we still got some left over, which I will tuck into my garden. Uh, all the hookers over here are, of course, designated for under the oaks but it's looking good folks i'm really excited about it so thanks for joining me and remember in a world full of hate be a light take care everyone